Hi, everybody, and welcome to Gen Friends. Tonight, we have got a great panel of Terry O'Connell from the In-Depth Genealogist. Hi, Terry. Hey, How Sherry are you? Hi. Doing good. I'm glad to have you here. And we also have Shelly Murphy from, well, we also, we also know her as the Family Tree Girl. Yes. Hi. Hello. I, hi. <laughs> so good to have you here. And I am Sherry hudson Passy, and I'm, I am, um, my business is Caroline Girl Genealogy, and I'm your host for Gen Friends. And we are going to talk about the first episode in this season of Who Do You Think You Are? And this episode featured Mandy Moore. And I think we all know Mandy Moore from her singing career. And if any of you watch This Is Us, well, we know her from This yeah. Is Us. <laughs> I watch it. Do you do y'all watch it? Yes. Yeah. I watched a you know some things from the last season yeah, it's good and it was just too much crying <laughs> too much, too much, <laughs> too much so, you know too much. so it well, was a little yeah. too much yeah <laughs> I it, love it, was good, though. it was good yeah, she's story. one of these that can cross from the singing a lot of them can't you know so the, the singing to the acting she can she can do that but she um wanted to know about her maternal grandmother's family she was very close to her maternal grandmother mm -hmm. and wanted to know a little bit more about her family and, i love that she stuck with someone that she knew uh, most people get in it because they want to know what they didn't know mm -hmm. she really is like i'm so connected with this woman i want to know more about her Yes. I thought that was good, too, because the whole journey, she kept saying, this is making me feel closer to her, mm -hmm. you know, because she had pa she's passed away. And so everything that she was learning, she kept saying, oh, she would have loved to have heard this. And it just makes me feel connected to her. So um, her she, other point about her just being 15, I think that's what really stuck a chord with her. It, you know, in the, the beginning when she found. was learning about mm -hmm. the, the traveling, the mm -hmm. ship. You know what is this? What is an indentured? What she was very much reading? into looking at the yeah. records, and so I don't know if she was being prompted to say, "Okay, what does this record tell you?" And then they would turn sure. on the, you know, I don't know, but she started out on Ancestry.com. Yes, and they had you know the Moore family tree, which they had put together for her. My first thought was, please don't tell people just to go and assume everything <laughs> is correct on this tree. <laughs> but we got to realize well, they had put that tree. together for her for the episode. Yeah, <laughs> so, the magic tree. The magic tree, exactly. Yeah. And so yeah. what she found was that um, her ancestors went back to Ireland. Mm-hmm and England, and then there was that twist. Who wants to talk about the twist of the marriage? Well, I will because I yeah. really like, so they show her, they, she puts in, it was um, Ellen, Ellen Flynn and- Mary. No, the uh, husband was, I can't remember the husband's name. I think you're talking about the husband. Edwin Barney and Ellen there Flynn. Edwin. There you go. Mm -hmm. No. That's not right? I thought it was. No, I think it was before that. It might have been. Whatever. She puts it in the system and it comes up with one marriage record. Now, right. how often do you search Ancestry and get a reply of one record? <laughs> not often. So you wonder, was that staged? Or well, not? it wasn't even in the countries that yes, she was exactly. even familiar with. There was no, there was nothing to say that she was in New South Wales. There was nothing. And I was really like, okay, that's just too weird. And I'm going to have to look at it. So today I did. And this is what, so this is what I did. I did the first search and there was like 4,000 records for the first search. And that was U.S. and it was just vital records in general. And I narrowed it down. And when I did the narrowing down, there were 183 marriages for England. And when I changed it over to Australia, I see, okay, is that going to do it? There were still seven records. The only way to make it show the one was to mark Ellen as exact yes okay only way it came through so i thought you know it's cool that they show them putting the search details in mm. but we really don't see what their parameters are and i never really thought about it until mm. i saw the one record because usually you do see a list of records yes you do and, really you, have, front, and you, know? you have to go through and figure them out and you know i'm thinking and if they're yours yeah, right. Well, that's what I'm saying. And I'm thinking, had I done that search, probably, especially at the beginning, if a hit had come up for Australia, I would have just ignored it. Yeah, I wouldn't have I even didn't thought. It didn't even show. That, that, <laughs> that, that, I that. wouldn't even have looked there thinking, what were they doing there? Would have never thought anything mm -hmm. about anything besides 
where we Ireland were at. Or England or, yeah, Just something England like that. England well, or I, Ireland was it. I, I think if you know, well, no, I wouldn't know because they were in. She still only knew England and Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. And they didn't know where in Ireland specifically at that point. No. If, if you know Irish history, you know that some of them went, you know, there were deportations for the criminals. Right. So exactly. You, know, you, know, you should look. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. But you know what? You bring up a good point for someone new researching in Ireland. Yeah. Um, or even England. Mm -hmm. If you. Well, that could even be me because I research Ireland and England, but that's because I have mixed heritage. Mm -hmm. What if somebody just assumes, wait a minute, we're all Americans, we're only in England, right. that they don't have information to say, you know what, you should check Scotland, you should also check check Ireland, mm -hmm. just automatically, mm -hmm. just because you're in Europe. <laughs> you know, right. as far as Great Britain, right? I think that's a great lesson. Inside. It's a great yeah. lesson for all of us not to yes. poo a record because we can't see how that would fit in, right? Or so, we've never been told, right? And or so, do a basic Google search of like the history of that time and yes. that place, yes, you'll get a little bit of a clue. Because I know I will do that, like, okay, like, really, what's going on in this time frame in this area? So See, we do that now, but not in the beginning. You're right. Not that's beginning. that's exactly right. That was what I was going to say. Not in the beginning. You don't think to yeah. do that. So yeah. she ends up going to Australia. How fun is that? Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and then she learns about the Earl Grey yes. scheme. scheme. That's right. The Earl scheme. Grey scheme, which was to take young women out of poverty because yes. the potato famine was going on and yeah. sent them to Australia where there was lots of bachelors <laughs> looking <laughs> for wives. And so they signed up for that and they went to Australia. And it turns out that she went with her sister. And we'll talk about that backstory as we go through because they went to Australia and then back to England. Mm -hmm. So um, she signed up to go. And what I thought was interesting, well, number one, the, the ship list said that she was 15 years old. Um, and she was able to go to the actual place where, when she got off the ship right. in Australia, that she went and lived for three months until she found work. And mm -hmm. I thought that was interesting. But, you know, they had the, it set up, barracks-like, you know, where they would. But did mm -hmm. you notice that some of the bunk beds had names on them? Yes. And they didn't yeah, explain and I think that. that. I wondered about that. I think that's just because it's now a museum type place. Right. But I'm just wondering, where did those names come from? It may from that list. Maybe and, and was, but they didn't show her. You know, this would be not her name. How many girls it? probably came through there. So it could be something like uh, people have found out that their ancestors came through there, and maybe mm -hmm. it's a little plaque that they've they've donated. Maybe they donate to keep the place running or something in their ancestors' name. But anyway, I thought that was interesting that they had names. How long did that go beds. on? I don't remember. I don't either. Hearing the time frame. I don't either. I don't remember how long and, and how because many. That would be interesting for all of us that have ancestors during that time to just check. Just if check. <laughs> I'm wondering on Ancestry if there's, was the database on Ancestry or but was it at that Huh? Say, that, say that again. You don't have a book, but the records were on the, ancestry. The, okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. So the Earl Grey scheme went from 48 to 50. 1848 to 1850? So no, years? Four, not long. Over 4,000 female orphans immigrated from the workhouses in Ireland. 4,000. Wow. That's, that's just amazing. And, and you can see, you know, if you're in a workhouse, why you would want to go. I loved the fact that they had artifacts, that they had bonnets and slippers. That was and amazing. And stockings. And, and yeah. because for me, I just could imagine, you know, what they were wearing and what they looked like. And they, and they sent them with those clothing so that when they got there, they, they would look stuff. nice because yeah. they were looking for jobs and then eventually husbands. So they wanted somebody to come and hire them, but they couldn't have them mm -hmm. come dress like they were in the poorhouse. And they probably fed them really well on the ship to fatten them up and <laughs> so they would look good. Um, she was well, yeah, because it was Britain was behind it. Yes. They had the food. They had the food. Absolutely. Correct. Absolutely. And she was fortunate in that she did find work with a family and, um, 
they they surmised that what she probably did was nanny and, and general mm -hmm. housekeeping. They didn't go into the story about her finding, you know, how she met her husband or any of his background or anything like that. So I don't know if that was a time sensitive issue or they couldn't find anything. I mean, it could just be that, you know. Yeah, but she's the alive. The story. I know, I know what, what I'm saying. But you know what I mean to bring that down. Right. I don't know. They just never mentioned anything about his, you know, him being in Australia. Right. And, how he got there and, and their, you know, just the marriage and then that they had ended up back right. in England. So that's yeah. really the only, the only thing. And so then um, the next step was to go back to England. <laughs> and and I had out. a question. Yes, mm -hmm. go ahead. So the Lady Peel was the ship that she went on. Yes, now, right. Like I said, the ship records are on Ancestry. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, so it went to 1849 was when she went. In 1849, the ship was not registered with the Lloyd's Registry of Shipping. Oh. Uh, which I'm assuming is where everybody's listed. Um, I think insurance purposes, maybe. Oh, probably, yeah. Because I didn't look into that. Yeah, money. But, um, like, two years later, it's back into the registry. The ship normally went from England to Canada. Oh. oh. Okay. Taken out of service for that to bring these girls. So when she went in 1849, 22 girls from the... Um, from the workhouse went with her, the casual. Okay. Casual so she workhouse. went, she went with people, she went with her sister and then other, other girls that she knew. Well, that's very yeah. interesting. It's interesting to me. They called it a scheme. Maybe that's why. Everything is there is a scheme with the government. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it's scheming. You know, we, might, we might need to pay attention to that. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's 2018. Oh, but goodness. I have yeah. a question. Go ahead. Did you not think it was odd? I think it was three different times she came across one of the lists and she saw the Ellen and saw the Mary, mm -hmm. the sisters, mm -hmm. but she never, it's, the lady never admitted in the beginning, the researcher, that that could have been her sister. She just said, could have no, been. I think they had to let it play out just for the sake of TV. Yeah, probably. You think so? Because probably for the drama of it. Mm -hmm. They but were all the under there and it was blank. And it seems like to educate the public, you know, she could have said one more sentence. Right. <laughs> you right. know. But here's something even more interesting. So on the ship registry, it was um, Mary Flynn, the oldest sister. Right. I think she was 18. Yes. And then it was Ellen Flynn, 15. There was another Flynn underneath her. There really? was. Judy there was. Flynn, and she was 18. And she was also from Tipperary, but she wasn't from the same townland. And I couldn't make out the townland. And I tried yeah. finding it today, um, but I couldn't. So I thought, that's interesting. I wonder if it was. They were related in some related. way. Maybe. Yeah. 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 Do they do show notes? On who do you think you are? Ancestors you know, blog usually does. Because Gates used to, there used to be show notes. Show notes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. where they, you know, a lot of stuff that they you didn't hear on mm -hmm. TV. Right. I think Johnny's group and them did the notes or whatever, but they were there for mm -hmm. people to view, you know, because there's yeah. a segment of us that are going to go look stuff up. That's exactly right. <laughs> exactly right. Just the curiosity. Wait a minute. Because exactly. like I said, it bothered me. Yeah. that they wouldn't say repeatedly when they looked on the list when mm -hmm. the sister was under her right. and had the same last name, but it yeah. was blank. So it wasn't ditto marks or anything, but not to say that when you've seen it, you know, consistently. Right. Well, and, she did, and Mandy did ask once and they just said, did. well, you know, we, we it just could be know. basically. And, and I think Terry's right. I think a lot of it was just to keep the show flowing, I mean, flowing so that they can then say, you know, that was. Right. That we was had the end. Oh, look, Mary has the same parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for the, now I was shocked when the parents, her dad, they were in America. Well, the dad, shocked. the dad went to America. He probably went to America to try to earn some money to get money. them. Yeah. Because once we get back to England, we discover that the girls and their mom have been sent to the workhouse. Yeah. But where did mom go? She was at the workhouse. 
and dad went to America. Only dad went to America. So my okay. my theory is dad must have gone to America to try to earn some Do money same thing. to yeah. bring to bring them, mm -hmm. you know, get them out of that workhouse. I, I thought it was interesting that the workhouse that they had actually been in had been repurposed, as they said, um, to yeah. a hospital. And so they took Mandy Moore to one close by that was still, you could still walk Operating. through and see what they were mm -hmm. like. And we've seen some of those before on, on mm -hmm. Who Do You Think You Are? And just the... The, just the, the separating of families and, and the cold and, you know, the lack of food and, and, and the disease that ran through those places. They, they were just yeah. death traps. To I think the with. one that they took Mandy to was a lot nicer. I agree. Because it was like all painted fresh. Like a little it was fresh and white. Yeah. Yeah. Where when they took Rosie O'Donnell, you could. I was thinking it was so dark. It was Rosie so cool. had not been taken care of. It was. Put it this way, there was no attention being paid to that building. Not at all. And uh, which, which really, I mean, do you want it fresh painted and nice, or do you want to see it the way they saw it? I mean, maybe I want to see painted. it the way they lived yeah. it. it. You know, I agree, but um, I just pulled it up, and it is like a it's a workhouse it's a museum. Museum, yes. Mm -hmm. So you know, they got that's why the names were on the beds. Well, that was well, that, that was, was in Australia. Was, yeah, that, that was, was in Australia. Australia but yeah. I'm still thinking it's yeah. the same thing because that was pretty much a museum as well. Mm -hmm. True, true. true. Yeah. So, so they pulled the the workhouse records and they found that um, the mom died there. Yeah. Um, and and it was like forty people died on that same day. Yeah, something like that. Uh, yeah. I think it was forty. Yeah, and so she asked, you know, where would they bury them? And and mm -hmm. she was told, you know, out in the garden or by the wall. I thought the garden was interesting. Yeah, that's yeah. where she yeah. took the flower. She put yeah. it yeah by the wall, and then she went. Um, she, they they took her. She said, "Can I go to the the original place? Even though it yeah. is, you know, a hospital now, it's not." the workhouse yeah. can i go there so he took her and and they couldn't and by the way they they couldn't find anything they, there was no trace of of the correct the the guy that went to america they couldn't make that connection because yeah. they said there was too many people it was james i believe james yes. Flynn. there was just too many and they just could not connect which one that he was and so i'm sure that everybody in america that's kind of james Flynn right. <laughs> is going oh, maybe it's me maybe i'm related right. to mandy moore yeah. but um she was able to go and she placed some flowers by the wall mm -hmm. and then she walked into where the garden was and it did say that it was a um, um yes. in memory of uh, all the people who died, died in, her, in uh mary flynn yes yeah her, her name was on there on the wall yeah mm -hmm. and, and she that's what and she was saying how closely connected she felt to her grandmother being yeah. there you and know, you that, could see it she you felt could her could see it and you could you could see her she wasn't pretending. I think she was yeah. really into this trip and she was really looking at those documents and she was really excited about the things that she was finding. And she was asking questions. And like I said, I don't know if they prompted her and said, okay, look at this document and what are you seeing and what is it telling you? Or if they just let I them I think they give them some questions. Maybe it depends some of them are just going to flow, but they need yeah. to get certain things out that leads to the next thing. So I think it's pretty much stage somewhat, somewhat. You, you know what I mean except and, and for I think some, some people are it. probably better at looking at those clues yes. than other people are really realizing yes. and that's really important I, t I think for for those of us researching is we've got to look mm -hmm. at those records really look at those records and see what they're telling us and what that's telling us we need to look at next but and see I call that questioning yeah, I think you and need that's to exactly question that information right. and write it down. And huh? what are you getting? That's the so what stuff. Exactly. And what are you getting from there? And what's mm -hmm. your next step? Which is right. You're you're building your research search plan just by asking questions. Exactly. And you yeah. get so much more out of a document when you question. You're not challenging. You're just questioning. Well, what does oh, sure. this mean? What does it what mean? Was it yes. telling? What is it telling me? So and I know that I've heard people say for every document that you get, write the story of the document, write it as yes. a story. This person did this and this and this and, you know, write it. And, and then you can see, oh, oh, wow, that's cool. I wonder what happened next. And it makes your mind think in different ways. And so yeah. I think sometimes, especially when we're starting, we look at a document, we pull out the name and the date and the place. And, and we're done. And we're done. <laughs> but we can't. We, we really can't. can't. Each and and I know I do something. that 
yeah. in presenting or teaching, you know, like at Maggie and stuff, yeah. they can't go to the next step. They got to resolve this and they got to figure out how to resolve it. You know, and one of the, the, you know, assignments that they have is to analyze a document and come back and mm -hmm. give us the beginnings of their research plan. Yeah. That's responding good, just off of the a death certificate or whatever exactly, it is. Exactly. That's good practice. And it's really good fun. <laughs> it's really good fun. And it helps you not miss things. You know, you, you start yeah. writing things out and you see the holes and you realize, oh. Yes. You know, I, they just kind of. Right. Get you right here. Yeah. 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 Which is something that's fun to do, I think, with a genealogy buddy, too, is for, you know, because the two of us looking at something. We might see two different things on That's some of it. True. So the two of us looking at a document, I know I swapped a file with another person because we both had brick walls for like over 20 some years. So we handed the complete file over to each other to go to mm -hmm. start the research on it. You know, sure, I, I think, think yeah. I'm settled with mine, when I, with her information, because sometimes we just don't want to give in. Mm -hmm. You know, like thinking of Mandy and stuff like that, or the researchers said, well, this is what this means. This is that mean. But wait a minute. I have a question. You know, <laughs> is there, <laughs> wait a minute, yeah. you know, is there another record? And again, she kept asking that too. Are there any more records? Are there any more records else. that can help? Is yeah. there anything else that you found? Right. You know? Did you notice right. There, there is a change in the way they're doing things? So she didn't, she, though she sat down with a couple genealogists or historians, yeah. the conversation really wasn't over was the different. records. Like in yeah. New South Wales, she, she was given the book. Here's the book. Here's the thing. We have the page bookmarked for you. She went, she looked at it. They showed it. Right. She went back to the she, librarian and said, she had to go I down and copies. And Exactly. And she had the gloves. <laughs> yeah. this, this was so, a glove episode. She had to use the gloves. Yes. So it was exciting to see that, um, yeah. I mean, even if somebody was off screen prompting her, it was exciting to see the difference of her in taking that information and then somebody, instead of somebody spilling it too right. Her. I agree. Yeah. I agree. It's teaching yeah. some technique instead yeah. of just handing it, you know, teaching yeah. techniques. I think that's really good that they're doing that. Yeah. I hope they continue. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we saw some new genealogists. They, both of them had never been on. Never like, been on. That's, yeah. Yeah, but are you talking about over in England? Uh, Melissa Betts was in California. Oh, okay. You're coming. Okay, back then. Yeah, I had not the seen Irish her. guy. I've not seen him on any I other. I didn't know him either. No. So it was interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and I kind of kind of like it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like good. It. You keep seeing like. Um, you know, Jen Utley's on Long Lost Family. Almost. Oh yeah, I'm going to hide. <laughs> I, you know what? I hope I'm related to her some kind of way. <laughs> I mean, I want to make that phone call and Jen gives me that info. Right, here it is. <laughs> oh, yes, I think you'll find this interesting. Look at this. Oh, this is this is the father for sure. This is the master. I can't even get a picture. <laughs> it's his DNA. I mean, they're, I know they're solving these and all right. of that is done, but my goodness. Real world, I want, <laughs> I want exactly. Canada. I want to open a pension file and there be a picture of somebody. Right. You know? <laughs> I'm not exactly. finding those things. Well, is but there? It's any good to see the love being spread throughout the genealogy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It is. Well, is there anything else about this episode that maybe we didn't touch on that either one of you wanted to? talk about i thought it was a good episode of watching somebody yeah. who was very interested and and looked and through the brilliant. records and followed through and you know wanted wanted to know these things and was truly touched truly touched and felt connected and she said at one point i didn't think i would care about somebody that i only heard about just a few days right. ago and I isn't that what it is for all of us? We find I think them and there's so. an instant connection. Mm -hmm. I, I think she said something very um, important in the beginning of the show. Mm -hmm. when she was talking about um, how her grandmother passed and she was still a teenager and she had wished that she had sat down and, and asked her all these questions. Yes. She says, it's like they take that life with them. Yes. All their the stories. Oh. All their stories. And, and how many of us wished yeah. we had sat down and, and talked to people? What's you know? the African pop, pop, 
proverb? When, when, somebody when dies, someone like, dies, an ancestor dies or an elder dies, it's like a library burning. Yes. Oh. A library burning. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Yes. No. No. I think it's a great start for the season. I think so too. So, hey, if you're watching, get out there and get those interviews done with yeah. your, your, uh, your relatives, you know, well, and, it's, you're doing. and, and time not even, doesn't wait on anybody. Time doesn't wait on anybody. And don't say, oh, well, you know, my grandmother is not alive. Well, what if her siblings are still alive? You could interview your, your siblings about their memory, memories yeah. of your grandparents, because yeah. we all see things differently. We all have different stories to tell. So, Interview everybody. Get out there. And I, do I it. have to share this with you. Okay. Um, our local Irish center started um, doing Irish school again this this year. I guess okay. they did it years before. And I went in and talked to them about genealogy, of course. And they're, for the first um, term, they had to go and interview and come back with, you know, I gave them like five questions, told them to think of three more. And mm -hmm. they all came back and gave these cute little reports. And they were <laughs> changed from like eight to 12. And it was like the most amazing thing just to see them. And they were so excited uh -huh. to come and share. Oh, that's they so got cute. information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. it was uh, last week sometime, Peggy Loretson posted on Facebook that she and her yes. husband had been homework and that her yes. grandkids had called. The grandkids had called, the one grandchild, and, I and think. And asked, asked questions. So. Oh, yes. Very but important. There was a lot of good lessons we could pull out of out of this episode. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. thank you so much, ladies. This has been really fun talking about this episode. We've got uh, three more in this season, and we'll be we'll be talking about those. So, um, we hope you'll join us again for Gen Friends. And with that, we'll see you next time. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.